Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this week's Women in Astronomy, we are going to talk about Nicole Drain Laporte and discuss her contributions to astronomy. So what was she known for? Well, first of all, she lived from 1723 till 1788 and was self-taught. She enjoyed reading and learning and taught herself a lot of things. And one of the early things that she did was observe a comet early on, which developed her interest in astronomy. In many ways, she was best known as a human computer in an era long before any kind of uh, electronic computers as we have today. Calculations all had to be done by hand. So some of the scientific work that she is best known for included clock making and the mathematics behind that, especially that of the pendulum. And here we can see some of her work for uh, different uh, lengths of a pendulum in terms of the uh, calculating the different periods that will occur. So we see specifically that this was calculated by her and she is specifically mentioned there in it. She is also well known for having helped to calculate the return of Halley's Comet. Now we think that might be a very easy thing to solve. However, it is difficult because there are multiple objects involved. Now, when we think about that with the solar system, typically the planets, we can consider just the planets uh, interacting with the sun and we can figure out their orbits. However, when we start looking at lower mass objects, things like a comet, it becomes very difficult because it's sometimes what is called the three body problem. And it is not something that is just a simple solution to. So it required very detailed calculations and actually they were able to increase the accuracy of the prediction as to when it would occur to much closer than the couple of the year or two that Halley had predicted for for its return. So they still weren't correct. But you have to remember when we're looking at a comet, you have to take into account the effects of all the other objects. It's not just the comet and the sun. How close does it pass to Jupiter? And what does Jupiter do to its orbit? What does Saturn do to its orbit? It could be more or less depending on where they happen to be located when the planet, sorry, when the comet is in that part of the solar system. Now, she also did detailed calculations on the positions of Saturn as shown here. So here are some tables of the positions of the planets and those of Saturn in the last column there are the ones that she did the calculations for going from 1775 to 1784. And finally, she worked on calculating the exact time of the solar eclipse of 1764 that would occur across parts of Europe. And here we see the path of that eclipse going through Portugal, Spain, uh, parts of northwestern France and southeastern England, and then up into Scandinavia. So knowing the exact timing allowed observers to be able to look for the eclipse much more accurately and to be prepared for what was what was her uh, work. Now her work was greatly unappreciated at the time, although there are you know, now monuments or roads named after her and we actually have one here uh, listed for her. And in fact, her work on Halley's Comet was actually removed from the book. The credit for her was removed from the book when that was published. So let's go ahead and summarize what was learned here. Uh, first of all, we know that Lapotte was self-educated and really read everything she could find, wanted to learn more about everything. She is best known for her work as a human computer in detailed calculations, including that the, the time of the return of Halley's Comet, the positions of Saturn in the sky, and the timing of a specific solar eclipse. So that concludes this discussion of Nicole Rain Laporte. We'll be back again next week for another woman in astronomy. So until then, have a great day, everyone. And I will see you in class.